Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be talking about The Obelisk Gate, which is book two in the Broken Oath trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Uh, last December, I did a review on the fifth season, which is book one, so if you want to watch that, then the link is on the top of the screen. Um, so I think book two was about the same quality as book one. I liked both of them. You know, I think I'm going to give them both a B. Uh, I think book two, however, suffers from a little bit of middle book syndrome, where it's just kind of like a bridge between the first book and the last book. You often see this in trilogies. Not every trilogy, but in some. Where it just seems like the plot isn't progressing as fast as the first one or the last one. Though we do still find out some new information, which is nice. Um, so our book one focused on Asun at three different points in her life. This book kind of focuses on... As soon as an adult and her adolescent daughter, Nasun, who it's pretty much set at the same time period for the most part. Um, and, you know, that's good because we pretty much saw all we needed to see from Asun from her past. And Nasun, I feel like it's the standout in this novel. I prefer whole scenes, chapters, much more than I prefer Asun's, but that's just me. So let's get right into the book. So let's start off with the prologue, which is actually told from the perspective of Shafa, who was uh, Asun's former guardian, who was very um, abusive to her, I suppose. Um, so he, uh, after she kind of destroyed the whole ship during the climax of the last book, he is drowning, but he takes his like inner guardianness to give him the will to rise to the top of the ocean. So that's good. I wish I had that. I'm a terrible swimmer. Um, so he is saved. And he's kind of saved by these fishermen. And he um, has a lot of memory loss from drowning. So he doesn't exactly remember that much about himself. But he remembers that he was a guardian. And he did help people with their orogeny. So... He, you know, it's kind of like his brain's in fragments. He doesn't really have all of his memories together. So let's um, move on to Nasun's chapters of the story. Um, so, whole chapters begin kind of where Asun's begin in the first book. You know, we just see her after her dad found out that both of them are origins, and he kills her brother... Um, but she, she doesn't kill her, so, and he kind of kidnaps her to, um, leave and go where they could, like, find these guardians who could cure Arajani. And I'm like, man, what's some, that's some favoritism you have there, because well, <laughs> you kill the son, but you, you can't take the daughter. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's some favoritism, I gotta say. So we, we find out that like Nasun has always been closer to her father than her mother because um, Asun was always hard on her because she was an origin and she was like secretly training her behind the father's back. Um, but still, like wouldn't that kind of have the same effect on the son, you know? <laughs> was the son not close enough to the father? He, he definitely deserved getting uh, murdered. But yeah, so... Her father's traveling with her, and he, like, hits her while they're journeying, and she kind of slowly realizes that her dad is a piece of shit. Um, but she can't, like, let him know that she knows that. She still gotta plays it off like daddy's little girl. But she kind of stops viewing him as her father, and more as just this bad man who's kidnapped her. So they're walking along, and they kind of realize, like, you know, since Alabaster started the fifth season... The climate has been insane. And I kind of like this because it kind of shows how people who don't really know much about Alabaster are reacting to it. You know, it's just we get like a lot of descriptions of how rough it is and how the conditions are bad. Um, so they eventually get to uh, this town called Found Moon, which is run by a bunch of Guardians. And it's led by Shafa, though he's much older than he was in the prologue because that took place like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We don't exactly know. Uh, and he's saying, like, um, they could cure her of her er erogeny. I still can't say that. Uh, but obviously, we, the audience, know this can't be the case. So, Nasun and her dad live in Found Moon, and Nasun's kind of doing really good at this erogeny thing. She's 
go into the ranks the same way Nasun, sorry, Asun did when Sia was little. Uh, I think her name was Demaya. I don't know. It's been a couple months. Uh, and so he gets really close to Safa, who's much kinder to him than he was to Asun. I'm, I'm guessing this is because of his memory loss, which I guess he forgot how to be mean or something. But he's really nice to him and very protective. And so he begins to, like, um, understand that erogeny is not just about, like, moving heat energy, but it's also, like, could work with living things and um, a lot of other magic stuff I myself don't really understand, but it's important for the plot. I don't know. My mind just kind of skims past this. I'm more of a character person than I am a magic person, you know? So I just kind of skimmed past that. Uh, so, see, it's able to, like, draw power from the obelisks nearby, um, and it's similar to what Esun did in book one, and she accidentally kills one of her classmates by turning him into stone, um, because he has a bad dream, and I'm like, man, that classmate, he didn't ask for to do, <laughs> he didn't ask for that to happen, you know? Not his fault. So as Nasun becomes more powerful, um, her dad realizes that she's not being cured and she's just being trained to be a good erogenist. So he confronts Saf about it and then he tries to kill Nasun, but she's able to take the upper hand on him because he has training now and she turns him into stone, like Medusa. Um, which is good because that dad was like the worst dad in existence. Well, actually... <laughs> Actually, no, that probably still goes to the dad from Full Metal Alchemist who turned this, like, dawdle into a dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a video from another time. But yeah, um, I'm glad he's out of the pixel because he was the worst. Um, so now I'm going to be moving on to Esun's part of the story. Which, like I said, is a little less interesting than Nasun's. Mainly because it's exposition-y. So Esun is in Kastrima which is an underground city, and she's in a calm of origins there. And uh, origins in this calm are, they'll, I don't know, they're able to live openly alongside everybody else. You know, um, I don't know, they're, they're accepted. And this has a lot to do with the influence of Ika, who is the leader. And there's also like, um, there's also like, able to um, power the town with their origenetics, <laughs> their magic, you know, they're able to power the underground city, which is another reason why they are liked so much. And Alabaster is also in Kostrima, and his body is slowly turning into stone, because it, I guess something happened when he split the continent in half and started the fifth season. And he's living with um, Antimony, who is another stone eetle. And he doesn't like Hoa. Hoa is another stone eetle, it turns out. Um, and he's not actually a child, he's actually much older. So we're getting a lot more answers when it comes to Hoa. I'm still wondering um, why the story is still told in second person. You know, I I'm guessing it's because, like, maybe Esun's gonna lose her memory. And this whole series is Hoa telling her what happened. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. I, I don't mind the narrative device. I like it. I'm just wondering why, you know? So Alabaster's been catching up uh, Esun on what he's been doing since book one. And he um, ha has been trying to find the moon. The moon has been missing for like thousands of years. And... Um, that's why the seasons are so out of whack. Because ever since the moon went missing, everything kind of just fell apart. And he split the continent in half because he wanted to, like, he wanted to make enough energy to use the obelisk to find the moon. Um, and he's explaining all of this to Esun. <laughs> so it's kind of complicated. Um... And he is aware of the magic that Nasun discovered, which is called magic, which is why, like, the last book, it's like, oh, you don't know what magic is, you know? Uh, and that's the true, like, force that's able to make erogeny possible. 
and he tries to teach Asun how to use it, but he's getting weaker and weaker. And meanwhile, you know, they'll him and Asun are kind of reconciling. They don't that they don't hate each other anymore, and they're able to forgive themselves for the child's death. Uh, which is nice, you know, it's a nice moment, because I feel like Asun has been through a lot, I feel like she needed that, and, um, so he's using the last of his strength to rescue Asun from trying to harness the power out of one of the obelisks, and he dies in the process, and, uh, Asun blames herself for this death. Meanwhile, um, there's tensions between the stills and the origins and Kastrima, and there's a raiding party from a rival Khan, uh, which is called Renanus. <laughs> Sounds funny. Uh, and they left their home to try to seed Kastrima. And they seed them by coming through the ventilation shafts and all, um, forcing them out into the open. So the Renanuses <laughs> are um, against Alabaster and Antimony's plans, and they're like battling Kastrima, and Asun is able to use every obelisk on the planet to form the Obelisk Gate. Hey, that's the name of the book! Um, so she uses the power to turn all of the Renanuses into stone at the same time. So the Kastrimans survive, but the, um, the underground community is destroyed. And if they don't leave, they'd starve to death and suffocate to death. So they're setting out to find a new home. And meanwhile, Asun is going to try to find Nasrin because he finds out that she's still alive while she taps into the gates. Well, the, um, the obelisks. Uh, so that's what the book ends on, um, Hole's still trying to find the moon, which I thought we'd be able to find the moon by book two, but whatever, I'm fine with it, um, and I don't know, I, I liked, I liked Essun's chapters, but I feel like a lot of it was exposition-y, you know, I feel like a couple of the chapters could have been slimmed down a bit to kind of just make everything on a need-to-know basis, you know, um, I don't know, that's just me, that's just my personal opinion. I overall did like the book, um, I thought it was, I thought it was very well written, um, but, you know, it's just some things. Uh, I gave it a B, uh, check out my review for, um, The Stone Sky, it probably wouldn't be available until March, uh, because I am currently reading both Leviathan Falls, which is the last Expanse book, and um, I'm gonna I'm starting Gone with the Wind, which is a huge chunky book. Which <laughs> my review on that probably won't be out until March. So um, yeah, it'll be a while. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll see you guys sometime later this week where I'll be talking about the newest episode of This Is Us. This Is Us, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.